I'm not starting for another five minutes, but there's not that many of you in here. So I want everyone to stand up. Everyone stand up. And now make your way down to the front. Okay? I won't be offended if you walk out during my uh, talk and you like climb over people and everything like that. That's fine. But let's fill in the front here so that I'm not uh, shouting to people at the back. All right? Deal? Thank you. And for people who are just coming in, I'm forcing everyone to sit at the front. So you can't go and escape at the back. Yeah, now, now we're going to do exercises. So now you're going to go to the back and come back to the front. And <laughs> That's my presentation. 30-minute workout. That's, that's the key here to starting a business, is being in really good shape. So, uh, it's okay, you're early, but I'm forcing everyone to come sit at the front. Well, we just, for the video, we have to make it, make it look like people are actually attending my talk and they want to be here, right? It's all about optics. If I knew any jokes, I'd tell them. But uh, if, 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 if I told a joke now, then I won't have any left for my presentation. That's the problem. I've got like three. Oh, well, I don't know about that. No extremes. Fair enough. Well, we, ha we had uh, the, the, the Linux tattoo before, so maybe uh, you know, if anyone's willing to brand me in the next three minutes, we can get a few extra viewers for that. For you who are coming in right now, I'm forcing everyone to come to the front, so you're not allowed to sit at the back. And if you think this talk is in Armenian or Russian, you're going to be disappointed. I apologize. Jan, I just made a joke about you and you missed it. I said, you know, we're going to attract, we had the tattoo earlier, and if uh, someone wants to give me a brand right now, then we'll get a few more viewers, but there were no takers. How are we doing for time in terms of the actual start time? Two more minutes, okay. Great. So maybe I'll ask you guys some questions while we're starting. How many of you are currently students right now? Okay. 25%, let's say. How many of you have graduated in the last five years? Okay. In the last month, all right. Great. And why are you guys here at Bar Camp this weekend? Why are you here at Bar Camp this weekend? No other choice. No other choice. Dictatorship, got it. Most wanted event of the year. All right. And you're stuck with me. I'm sorry. <laughs> they clearly showed someone else. Oh, I have a clicker somewhere. I should find where I put that. Here it is. 
All right, I'm going to start. Welcome, everyone who's coming in at the back. I'm forcing you to come forward. So, what is today's talk? It is wash, rinse, repeat, building a business from scratch. Now, there's all sorts of different types of businesses. You've got B2B, you've got B2C, you've got marketplaces, you've got pure technology plays, you've got all sorts of different things, right? Uh, I'm really only going to talk about some of my own experience today, which is more on the marketplace side of things. Now, if you don't remember anything from my talk today, this is basically what I want you to remember, okay? This is a cat, and it's a very persistent cat, okay? And if the GIF had started in the first place, you actually see that the cat only gets through the door on about the third try, okay? But it knows that there's something on the other side of the door, and it just keeps going and going and going and going and going and going and going until it gets to the other side of the door. Building a business is a lot like that, okay? And I can't promise you there's anything on the other side of the door other than a black hole either. So I wear two hats. Okay, so one of the hats that I wear is a photographer. The other hat that I wear is a founder. If you enjoy the talk that I give today, come see me tomorrow talk about photography. If you don't like the talk that I give today, then save yourself some time and don't come tomorrow. <laughs> so, on the photographer side of things, I've been an editorial travel photographer for about 15 years. So what does that mean? Editorial means magazine, travel means travel, so I run around the world taking pictures for magazines, okay? Some of these magazines you've probably heard of, GQ, Travel and Leisure, New York Times, Vanity Fair, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the one hat that I wear, and I'm going to talk a lot more about that tomorrow, especially in the context of something called large format photography. You know those old cameras where you go under the hood and it like takes forever to take a picture? That's what I'm going to be talking about tomorrow, and you'll get to play with, with the camera itself. Okay. The other hat that I wear a tech startup founder for about the last three years. So here's something you should know about startups and companies in general. They age you. You see how young I started there? Yeah. By the end of it, I look like I live in the mountains, right? Yeah. So startups and, and sort of that whole environment isn't for everyone. It can take a pretty brutal and exacting toll on you, um, but it can also be a lot of fun. So. I'm gonna, I'm gonna poll you guys again, so I want questions here. Raise your hand if you've ever started a company before. Okay, keep your hand up if that company is still around. Keep your hand up if that company is still around and you're still doing what you started doing. All right, so a handful of people, that's good. But I think one of the things that this has just showed us is that starting companies isn't for most people and I think that's probably a good thing. Okay, and I don't mean that in a pejorative way or anything else. 80% of companies, startups fail. So four out of five are toast. Okay? So success is rarely a straight line if there is any success at all. And again, these are all my thoughts. You talk to someone else and they're going to tell you something totally different. But this is what I feel and this has been some of my experience. So it's rarely a straight line if at all. So, this is what everyone has in mind, right? Unicorns, right? Everyone wants to be a unicorn. And so this is what you've got in your mind, the wild success, you've got your unicorn all picked out. But the reality is, your unicorn actually might be beaten to death by two small children. Um, so you don't always have that. Now, this is sort of what I think is the myth of success, okay? So you've got this notion of, you got this brilliant idea. No one's ever thought of this before. It's so good. And then you work hard. You're going to work really hard. And then wild success, right? So let's talk about the brilliant idea side of things for a second. I think a lot of people, when they have ideas, they don't want to share them with anyone because, oh, someone's going to steal my idea. You know, no one's ever thought, like, and you hoard it really close, right? The reality is most things have been done before. Most things have been thought of before and sort of ideas on some level are a dime a dozen. They're kind of cheap. Not to say that a great idea isn't a good thing, but it doesn't get you all the way there. Hard work. So, you know, probably half of you guys raised your hands when you said you're, you know, within a few years of graduation. That's great. You've got all of this track ahead of you. 
the hard work here isn't just like, oh, I'm going to show up, you know, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. or whatever it is. It's, it's not just that you're putting in long hours and long days, but there's actually a lot of cognitive stuff that's going on in terms of not just your product, but also how you're going to market it and all these sort of things. And it can be quite bruising, okay? And then maybe wild success. Now, I think this is closer to the truth in most cases, okay? In that you've got a bunch of brilliant ideas. Maybe one of them pans out, maybe one of them doesn't. They go out, they boomerang, they come back, they go in a circle, and then maybe one of them, you say, okay, now we're ready to take this to the next stage to hard work. And you work so hard. I mean, you're ordering all of your food online right now because you don't even have time to cook. Right? Like that's how hard you're working. And it's weekends and it's evenings and it's everything like that. And then guess what? You burn out. Okay, that's the droopy part there. Okay? Maybe you get through that. Maybe you don't. And then you are greeted with uncertain outcome. Right? And I apologize if I'm selling this as kind of a rotten deal. Maybe you guys are kind of like you came here to be really like, oh, he's gonna tell me the three things to make a successful company. Um, well, I sort of did, um, but maybe not. So I want to, before I jump in and talk a little bit about uh, my experience with as a founder at a company called Haystack uh, and some general sort of things around that, I want to give you a little bit of my background personally so you can see how that informs some of the stuff that I've done. So this isn't quite Sisyphus, you know, pushing a boulder up a hill day after day. But let me start in university. So naturally, I started in theater. I wanted to be in Broadway. Uh, and this maybe is the closest stage I've ever gotten to that. Um, after a year, of course, I transferred into commerce because I wanted to have a business degree. I thought that that was going to be the best sort of thing for me from an entrepreneurial point of view. I said, OK, I'm going to do a business degree, which means that, of course, I graduated in marine biology. <laughs> so you can see it's all in a straight line. Now, after marine biology, this was dot-com version one. So around the year 1999, 2000, I got a diploma in web design and CD-ROM development. Very useful. You guys remember CD-ROMs? Probably before some of you were born. OK. Uh, in the midst of all of that, I started a photography company uh, in Vancouver, because that's sort of what I loved, but never really had the courage to pursue. So I'm taking pictures of everything you can imagine in Vancouver. I'm taking pictures of weddings and products and, you know, you name it, I was doing it. Um, but I, at that moment, at that time, I had this sort of quarter-life crisis. So you guys might be familiar with the midlife crisis. The midlife crisis is sometime in your 40s or 50s and, like, you're in an unhappy relationship and the kids cost so much money and take so much time, so you buy a brand-new sports car and blow a lot of money. Well, the quarter-life crisis in your 20s, you probably are in an unhappy relationship. You don't have kids that you know of, and you don't have money to spend on a sports car. So you're just kind of dealing with a lot of angst. Uh, and that's where I was. And so naturally, what I decided to do was move to China to work for China World Best Group Carpet Company Limited. So this is a state-owned Chinese carpet company. Okay? You're all following the dots here, right? Okay, good. So what did I do there? I named carpets. I'm not even kidding when I say that. That is actually what I did. Uh, so, you know, I'd name this plum, maybe. It's sort of a purplish carpet here. Um, and it was while I was in China that I restarted my photography career, right? And then that long list of all those magazines that I shot for that you got to see at the beginning, those are some of the folks that I had an opportunity to work with. I wouldn't have had that opportunity unless I'd been in China. It was sort of the right time, right place, all of that sort of thing, right? After that, so I lived in Shanghai almost eight years. Uh, then I moved to New York City, continued photography career, and started Haystack. So, actually, I'm lying. You know how I said things, you got all these different ideas, and they go in different directions, and one way and the other way, and everything like that? Haystack itself actually started as something else. It started as something called Call Sheet. So, what's a call sheet? If you're ever on a photo shoot, you need to bring together a lot of different pieces. Let's say I have to do a photo shoot in Toronto, I'm Canadian, and I have to shoot 30 places in a week. That means that I need to 
have all of the contact information of the person at the restaurant, the chef, the you know, the art gallery, the boutique, the beach, you know, all of these different contact information of all these different people. It's a lot of work. Then I need to bring in photos ahead of time so that I know what I'm looking at, right? These sort of so-called scout photos. Okay, what does the museum look like? What does this store that sells Japanese furniture look like? What does this, you know, specialty Armenian apricot store look like? All of those sort of things, right? And then mapping. You need mapping information so you, because you want to cluster things together. If you're in a big city, you don't want to spend hours a day in traffic, right? And then you need to schedule all of this. So we built something kind of like this. But then what we realized was actually the photos was the interesting part for us. And we thought that there was a company out there which would allow you to pick the best photos from every one of the different providers of photos out there and bring them all into a single place. We're like, oh, that'll be easy. We'll just find the API. We'll integrate that. That's what, a day's work? A few years later, we decided that that was actually our company because it didn't exist. So at that moment, Haystack is born. And it's this beautiful scene in the stable, and people come from far and wide to see us, except it was more like that. So. If you're squinting at the photo, that is a baby cow being pulled out of a cow with a rope. Okay? So the only thing in common between the first photo and this photo is that it happened in a manger. So I want to talk a little bit more generally about companies now before jumping back in specifically to some of the stuff at Haystack. So when you're starting a company, essentially you're selling a dream. You're selling a dream to yourself. You're selling a dream to anyone who's involved in the development of it, to partners. If you have investors, you're selling that dream to them as well. And when you're starting that company, the vision that you have in your mind of that product or that company or whatever it is, it may not re sort of match reality. So this is your vision. You all want to move to San Francisco, the city on the bay, and have this beautiful skyscraper at like a particular time of the day with beautiful light. And this is what you see for your product. Your reality, though, may be more like this. Okay? It's actually a small tent in your backyard. But we all start somewhere, right? And you're not going to be able to build that giant, beautiful vision unless you start somewhere. So it's your job to do that. And you got to keep in mind the sort of expression, Rome wasn't built in a day. It wasn't, right? These things take time. So I'm going to give you a really quick overview of Haystack and then tell you a little bit more generally about some of the things that will hopefully allow you to have success in the things that you're doing. So what is Haystack? Haystack is a marketplace that brings together dozens of photo libraries so you can search them all in one place in the same way that there are sites for airlines and hotels. OK, so let me unpack that a little bit. Who here has ever used Kayak or Expedia or Bookings or anything like that? OK, fine. So you're all familiar generally with this notion of aggregation and bringing everything together in one place. When I say photo library, do people have any idea what I'm talking about? No. Blank faces looking back at me. OK, that's fine. So typically, in photography, you can get photos one of two ways. So let's say I'm here in Armenia. And there's a magazine here called Armenia Today. And they say, hey, Andrew, we heard you're in Armenia. We'd love for you to take some pictures for the next issue, which is this travel piece on Armenia. Can you do it? I say, absolutely. I go take some pictures. I give them the pictures. They give me money. Everyone's happy. So what that is is commissioned photography, new photography. Okay. The alternative to sort of new photography is old photography, stuff that's already been shot. Okay. So let's say there's a new flight from Yerevan to Toronto. And they say, we want to do this story on Toronto. We're, we know you're from Toronto. Do you have any pictures from Toronto? I say, yeah, I do. And so I do that. And I give them those pictures that I've already shot. Now, there are companies out there that just do that. So you guys might have heard of companies like Getty and Shutterstock and Adobe. And there's about 2,500 of them. Okay. So at Haystack, what we do is we partner with a bunch of these guys and bring them all into one place. Everyone with me? Yes? OK. Some nodding heads. I'll take it. So. One of the problems you have 
with a marketplace is this notion of a chicken and an egg, right? Users are only going to come to us if we have lots and lots of content. You know, there's no value if we only aggregate two sites, right? We have to aggregate many. If I told you I've got this great new website that aggregates Aeroflot and Polish Airlines, and you can, you can search both of them, you'd be like, okay, and, right? So you need a lot of inventory, so otherwise users aren't going to come to you. Now, the problem is sellers, the airlines or the photo libraries, don't want to give you anything unless you have users. So how do you deal with this? How do you create a marketplace from nothing? Because you've got the idea, you've got the vision, but you need both sides. So, trust. What do I mean when I say trust? Well, tr the partners need to trust that you're going to be able to build the skyscraper, and the users need to love what their product can become, not what it is today. I think the classic story that you guys have probably heard many times is the Airbnb story, right? So Airbnb says, you know, I'm going to allow you to have strangers stay in your home. Okay. And by the way, you're going to be able to stay in strangers' homes, okay? And that, I mean, it, we've now used Airbnb for many years, and we kind of shrug it off. But at the beginning, this was kind of a crazy thing, right? That you're going to allow strangers into your house and vice versa, right? And this platform was going to facilitate that. The only way that that happens is through trust, right? In Airbnb, there's been lots of times when there's been screw-ups and like, you know, such and such party destroyed a house and so on and so forth. And they tend to deal with things quite transparently. They said, yup, it happened and we're going to sort it out. Right? That's trust. Trust isn't always being perfect. Trust is owning up when you guys screwed up and it happens. This takes time. With partners, what this means is meeting people face to face over the course of sometimes years to establish that trust so that they know that you're going to treat both them and their content and buyers seriously. My personal background helped in our sort of situation because I had this history with magazines and all that other sort of thing. Users, it means talking to them. Okay? It means figuring out what you're doing right and mainly what you're doing wrong. Okay? At Haystack, what we decided we wanted to do was to take this sort of iterative or incremental approach to building our skyscraper. So, iteration, value at every stage. People here have probably seen this sort of uh, animation before, and it engenders a lot of strong feelings uh, between a lot of different people. So, if I as a customer say, hey, I'd love for you, know, you to build me a car and I give you a skateboard, you're gonna be pretty unhappy, right? That's gonna be terrible as an experience. But, if the goal here is actually, hey, I wanna get you from A to B, the skateboard kind of does it. The scooter sort of does it. Eventually, you, you kind of get better and better. But the idea is that at every stage, you're able to deliver some value to some group of users. It's not going to be for everyone, but you want to have some value along the way. Because if you try and build that car, you're going to end up with a car door. Okay? And that's not going to be of any value to anyone. And it's going to take a long time, and it's going to be expensive. So. What you need to do is you need to incorporate the feedback from users so that you can go from an early iteration like the skateboard, which is pretty so-so, to something later that they love. Um, I had a friend who used to work at Skype, and Skype has a web Skype in addition to the software one. And they had a question where they said, well, should we add the ability to have multiple callers kind of you know, on the web one? They didn't at the time. And they said, well, we don't know, we don't know, we don't know. So what do they do? They didn't build it. They built a button, and they put the button in there. And then they looked at their analytics, okay? And they saw who clicked on the button. And it turns out, A, not very many people clicked on the button. B, those who did mainly did it by mistake, okay? Well, they just saved themselves a huge amount of time and pain by looking at their analytics, looking at their data. Don't build it if no one needs it, if no one wants it, if no one's asking for it. So you're all familiar with this notion of an MVP, minimal viable product, I'm assuming. We're kind of trying to use slightly different nomenclature, mainly because if you ask a user, hey, do you want a minimal product? 
People are kind of like, ah, not so much. But people may actually be quite excited to have an early product. Okay, so I think that setting expectations is super important. So one of the ways, so this is our logo, by the way. You can visit us, haystack.im, not .com yet. Um, one of the things that we did was that, okay? We added that little beta in there. Now, you guys may or may not remember, Gmail was in beta for five years. Five years. This for us isn't about, oh, you know, it doesn't work, it's terrible, it's not a great experience. It's about optics, right? It's a fully fledged thing that works most of the time. But when it doesn't, it allows our users to give us a bit of a pass, right? So that they know where we're headed, so that they don't have those expectations. In our case, we've got some good news right now. It means that we have more than 200,000 creators uh, from 26 partners and gives our users about access to 500 million images. Okay? I wanted to share some other good news with you, uh, but I can't. So we were, we're in sort of last stage talks with a big partner that you guys would all recognize and know and so on and so forth, and I wanted to announce it here, but it hasn't happened yet. Which gets back to that sort of previous slide that I talked about of these things take time, sometimes years. So you get, to, you get to imagine whichever logo you want there. So this is where we're at today. We've got a scooter and a skateboard and the back wheel of a bicycle, okay? So we're getting there, and we've got folks who, who, who love what we do. Um, and after the car, well, then you get to do an SUV, and then you get to do a rocket ship, and then you get to, I mean, whatever the steps are, you know? I don't think, I think the thing about iteration is that it doesn't stop, right? As soon as you stop, your company's toast. Um, the last thing that I'll share with you guys is the importance of wins, okay? And so what I mean by wins is encouragement. Everyone loves encouragement. Everyone thrives with encouragement, okay? Uh, so I'm just going to read this quote to you. We got, so we launched into this public beta last fall, okay? And we got a bunch of press at the time and so on and so forth. And my partner, he got this email from a woman that I didn't know, he didn't know, none of us knew. And the email went like this. Tonight I found out about haystack.im. I gave it a test run and it's awesome. Where have you been all my life? I'm so blown away. I had to hunt down the creator so I can tell you how much I love it. As a photo director, it's a great time-saving tool, and it surfaces up so many options without loading five different agencies on different tabs. This is something big, something I believe in. If you need someone to answer your phones, order snacks, sell the awesomeness of Haystack to content providers, I'm there. Your number one fan, Connie. Now, normally, you'd call the police. You'd be like, so there's this stalker, and they found me. Because neither of us knew who this woman was. It turns out she's the former photo director at AOL, okay? So, you know, a reasonably big company and, you know, publicly traded and all that sort of thing. But what was important for us was that this was out of the blue. This was exactly our target audience and our target demographic. And it was someone who knew the industry and they gave us encouragement. And I think that, you know, I often talk about startups as they're the roller coaster you're not allowed to get off of. You're like, oh, oh, oh. Um, and encouragement is really important, right? Whether that's amongst your team or from outside people or whatever it is. Um, so in summation, remember the cat video, persistence, right? That's, uh, you know, Harry Potter was rejected like 12 times before it got published. Remember uh, the notion of setting expectations, the sort of the story of, of, of Gmail and, and how long that was in beta. Um, and remember trust. All right, the story of Airbnb and how important it is to have trust with your users, your partners, anyone that you're doing business with. Um, and then maybe, maybe you have success, but it's not guaranteed. So that's it. If you want to track uh, us down, uh, those are our handles on Instagram and Facebook and whatever else. Um, but I, do we have time for questions? We have five minutes left. We have time for five minutes of questions. So. Who has any questions? Anyone? Uh, I'm going to ask you to use the microphone so they can get it on the audio for the streaming. Is that okay? 
right there. There's one microphone on the left and one microphone on the right. Okay, so my name is Ani. I am from Jumag. And uh, thanks for Gates' speech. Uh, you s talk a lot about meeting expectations of the clients, of your users, but a lot of people are speaking about creating expectations. So, and in case of startups, in case of IT, it's very actual. So, what are your thoughts of creating expectations and building a startup? But better is than uh, meeting the expectations. So if I'm understanding the question correctly, you're asking, um, so I had this slide talking about managing expectations, and you say that there's a school of thought that says, forget manage expectations, you should tell your users what the expectations are. Is that more or less right? Well, creating. creating the expectations, yeah. So I think you can have both. So I think that if you're doing something truly transformative, I mean, this was Steve Jobs' whole thing was like, you know, we're going to give something to users they don't even know that they want yet or, or whatever, right? Uh, I think the reality when you're a small company, a small startup where you have limitations, right? Whether it's limitations in terms of money, limitations in terms of, uh, you know, development time, whatever it is, it means you have to be very careful about sort of how you deploy things. And that means capital, that means expertise, everything like that. And so I think for us, the notion of managing expectations is really a survival technique, right? If I promise to my partners or to my users, I'm going to give you this skyscraper, I'm going to give you this, I can't. Because I don't actually have the ability to do that yet. Because I don't have an infinite pool of developers, an infinite pool of money, an infinite marketing, all of that sort of thing. So I think for us, managing expectations is in some ways so that both the partners and the users themselves aren't disappointed. Does that answer your question a bit? Okay. Anyone else with a question? Can I get you to use the microphone as well? Thank you. How do you plan to make money? How do we plan to make money? What? Hold on. So. What we're doing is exactly what you've seen happen in a lot of other industries, right? So uh, you take Expedia or Kayak. What they do is they take a cut, right, an affiliate fee. So if you're finding something on Haystack and we pass you off to the partner, we get a cut. So, it's, I mean, this, is, this happens in, you know, 35 other industries. What we're doing here isn't super uh, innovative in that sense. We're just taking something that's done in a different vertical and applying it to this vertical. Anyone else? Anyone else? Oh, the thing I didn't say at the beginning was, A, thank you all for being here on a Saturday, where it's a beautiful day, you're in a windowless room. Uh, so thank you for being here. And then thank you to all the bar camp organizers for inviting me here. So thank you very much.